for those who don't know, um, I am the comic Despective. Uh, that name just comes from uh, reading comics, reading solicits, figuring out what are the kind of books you should be looking for or investing in. Um, so apparently we're doing 15 minute little chunks or segments. Um, and instead of focusing on one book, I like to give you more for your money and more for my money. Um, so I tend to, if you could look down where I am right here, and maybe I'll show you at the end, you'd see these stacks of books set up all over. Um, I sort of, I intercross them every 10 books. I sort of lie the other way so it helps the spines um, sort of even out. Uh, if you are moving books a lot and don't want to keep taking them in and out of boxes and looking, I find that's a really great way for me to, to get access, and I'll show you at the end. But um, let's take a look at uh, my Marvel stacks, right? So I have, a, I have a couple of stacks of Marvel, and what I'm always doing is either through the reading, through solicitations, um, through social media, seeing what books are heating up. Um, we continue, right, to see a lot going on right now in terms of the Avengers, um, the Illuminati appearing. Um, we know that issue seven was the book to get. Uh, everyone's been collecting those for a while. There are, of course, multiple covers on that one. You also have um, the variant cover as well. You've seen this one. Uh, but there are other Illuminati books to be chasing. And again, this is a rumor. And um, unfortunately, in a lot of comic speculation and investing, uh, sort of perception becomes reality, right? Um, so people are going to buy books. People are not going to wait for uh, there to be confirmation. And even sometimes when there is confirmation, like when Donny Cates was saying, that's not the Black Winter, or that's just, you know, Trad Moore's art, uh, people were like, well, he got caught, so now he knows. Yeah, okay, so that's what these comic creators are thinking about, right? But anyway, I digress. Uh, Illuminati, right? This was a great mini, uh, issue one, issue two, with uh, Stephen with the gauntlet. Issue three had all the ladies. Um, There's some other ones around, four or five. Uh, there was also that one shot, right? And um, that was uh, a really nice Del Otto cover, right? Uh, for the Illuminati one shot. There might have been a variant for this one as well, I'm not sure. But uh, there have definitely been Illuminati variants that we've seen over time. Um, this was just for, uh, this was one of the Avengers variants for Rise of the Black Panther, um, issue one. So there aren't a whole lot of those out there. Uh, one that I've always really loved. Um, I'm pretty sure this is uh, Jarvidic, uh, Jarvidic uh, I believe, uh, Marco. Um, so issue one of New Avengers, and um, I like that one a lot. Just all the Avengers, and they're holding the Earth in their hands. Uh, so who knows? Illuminati spec may be on the way, may not. Um, but if people are buying, sell them. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about Ages of Atlas. We know everyone's stocked up on all their Ages of Atlas and the variants and whatnot. Uh, hearing maybe about Arrow, so then I start to look at those Arrow books. Uh, this was the 1 to 50, um, the Jay Anacleto. Um, Janet Cleto, known a lot for, um, I think he did a lot of Xenoscope work, uh, but he did some great covers uh, for Heroes for Hire, um, and you know he's obviously become more well known over over time. Uh, so that's a cover I'd be looking for. Um, yeah, I've spoken a lot about on my regular channels the Ghost Rider spec that I'm looking at right now. Sort of um, these different spirits of corruption, spirits of pollution. We're going to see the return of vengeance um, in there. So I'm starting to pull those books, looking at that. Uh, spoke about the covers just of Natasha Belova on um, the Black Widow, uh, the the Rucka run, um, just like the Pamela Lee style covers, right? Like people may be looking for those, even though that doesn't look like, obviously. Uh, who's playing her in the movie. Um, starting to look at House of X, Power of Ten. Um, the Ten of Swords is coming back, right? So uh, I've spoken about Omega Mastermind. Uh, Omega Mastermind, is that? Omega Sentinel, sorry. Uh, there's Lady Mastermind, the whole other book, and Omega Sentinel. Uh, that X-Men Unlimited 27, she appears in there. We know she went through that singularity way back uh, when with um, Cardinal and Rasputin. They're going to be popping up again. Maybe they pop up in this series. I mean, it is Ten of Swords. I think Rasputin had that big soul sword. Maybe that ties in. Uh, while I'm on that way, also Children of the Vault. Uh, we know it was X-Men 186, but this is that nice sketch variant, uh, Chris Vaccalo. Um So that's one to look for for Children of the Vault. And we know that that team went into the cave, disappeared. They're gonna be coming out again. Uh, here's one I'm gonna talk about on, uh, 
I'm a Spectus Club a little more tomorrow and get into more detail on. Uh, this X-Men 2 uh, spoke about the High Summoner who is going to be very instrumental in probably bringing back uh, the merger of uh, Krakoa and the opening up of um, Arakoa or however they're saying the the sort of the shadow land of that where the four horsemen were defending. Uh, X-Men 2 is first appearance of that High Summoner as well. Um, and uh, this was the 1 to 25 Marcos Martin variant. Uh, you can get this for $8. All right, let's 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 speed this up because what, I have six minutes? All right, nine minutes left. Uh, I can't talk about this book enough, Fantastic Four 15. Uh, the, this is the uh, Valeria you want to chase. Um, she is, to me, a key character. I've spoken before about her with Nico. I love that Runaways Phil Noto uh, cover as well. But these Fantastic Four 15s, you can find these cheap and runs. No one buys Fantastic Four spec, but I will talk about that as well um, with what's been going on with Empire. But I'll save that for, for my show. Uh, Thor 617, Kid Loki, right? We're starting to see some of the uh, stuff come out. Uh, also Vision Quest in terms of Scarlet Witch and Vision. Uh, we saw uh, some of that alluded to that when Vision was disassembled and then put back together. Um, and the White Vision starting to sell as well. Uh, book I've been high in, back to those X-Men for a minute, is that New Mutants 13. Uh, Doug, huge, huge part of this. Um, we see him fighting magic in one of the upcoming covers. We know that early on um, he had that sort of techno-organic arm where he infected the island very early. Um, I think Doug Ramsey, huge character. People love um, that Cypher character, right? Because he's sort of like that underrated character and what, you know, what really are most comic writers, you know. They were the Doug Ramseys. They weren't uh, the Roberto de la Costa. De la Costa? Roberto de Costa. Uh, another book I've been looking at a little bit is um, that Young Allies book. A lot of young heroes, some interesting, uh, pretty good, diverse mix. Toro, um, Aranya has that Bucky, Firestar. Uh, why I like this one is because um, issue five um, of Young Allies has the first appearance of a character who is really making a second appearance and that character would be Aranya right she appeared first in Amazing Fantasy uh, 1 as the character Aranya but in that great uh, Craven's Last Hunt run um, Spider-Man 637 which I'll talk more about um, in the future uh, and there's a second print that's really hot for that one as well that is not only the first appearance of the Julia Carpenter Madam Web who is rumored to be part of the Sony movie but also uh when we first see her take on, sort of really take on that Spider-Girl mantle, even though I would, I think the Spider uh, ASM 637 more so than this one, and he does call her actually Spider-Girl in that, but here's where she finally accepts it. I guess Young Allies, five, Young Allies 5. 6 is a great cover, but the only other time you've chased this book is for that beautiful uh, Firestar cover for the variant for 6, and for some reason, they had a 1 to 15 for issue 6, and I think they had a variant for 1, but no other variants for the whole book, or and maybe not even for that first one. So that's one of those weird ones. Um, with the Age of Conchu over in Avengers, I've been looking at Moon Knight spec. Um, reading this book because this has a lot of Moon Knights introduced, sort of like very much like Jason Aaron did with uh, with Ghost Rider, um, with all those different Ghost Riders when he was doing his run. Uh, these are Moon Knights throughout time. Kang is one of those characters I think is always interesting um, when he finally does appear. Uh, but maybe we see some of those Moon Knights come into play here. And this is Cullen Bunn, who I think is a, an underrated writer, does a lot of great horror independent stuff. Uh, I'm grabbing Hawkeye, I'm grabbing like variants of like Gore the God Butcher because we're hearing more of the Christian Bale stuff, that's Thor 2 that's from the Lemire run which maybe we'll see more of, um, that influence as well also I just love these Captain America and the Mighty Avengers books by Al Ewing I mean, we know that Falcon Winter Soldier's coming out, I'm, I'm betting we're definitely going to see, of course, Sam with that cap and this is sort of where everybody's like, oh there's a new Captain America, new Captain America and then all of a sudden we see him coming, coming through there um, this was, I think Ewing, also another great underappreciated, uh, doing Empire right now, throwing in all this stuff, uh, and I'll talk more about that. In fact, is that next? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, The Avengers Celestial Quest, uh, is really a key, key book, and I think Empire's been pretty well received so far from what I've seen. Uh, so this, this tells that whole story of the Celestial Messiah, it tells it of Mantis, it has the, um, it has Koi, uh, this guy right here, uh, who is now looks much different in uh, in the Empire series, as we find out they're the villains. Spoiler alert! It has Swordsman who appears in there as well. Um, so this is an eight issue series. You know, uh, 
really cheap uh, when I grab these, grab some really nice copies of this. Um, I'm rereading this uh, online and um, I'm gonna figure out some other spec to pull out of that book. But that's something we should be looking at. Look at the solicits also, I think this book becomes a nice grab. Uh, this Mighty Thor 12, which has Mjolnir on the cover. Uh, we're about to see Thor about right after the Black Winter Saga is going to have a lot of uh, trouble with Mjolnir. This tells about the origin of Mjolnir and how it was formed. Um, so I think I think that's one you could be looking out for. And I, I'm grabbing those copies all the time. Uh, I've spoken a lot in the past about the uh, the Avengers, Mighty Avengers three. Uh, I'm sorry, New Avengers three by Ewing again. Uh, there were the one to twenty fives. Uh, these are important in terms of Empire as well because uh, this is where he actually becomes the. Um, sort of the king of the Scree Crawl Empire. I'm still thinking that we're gonna see those other two characters, the Chronicle and the Requiem. Um, like I said, that's the name of a, of a great rap album. Um, Chronicle and the Requiem are the Cree and Skrull who have all of the knowledge of all the races uh, embedded within them. So I'm thinking that uh, they might end up on the, th on the throne at the end, but then we see them in the Fantastic Four, so maybe they're gonna be uh, important characters, and I'll talk uh, more about that when I go more in depth on uh, Spectrus Club. Uh, another thing we see coming up are those um, Infinite Destinies annuals, and they are going to be sort of featuring the Infinity Stone throughout. And I've spoken uh, in the past about Hector Bautista, who has uh, the green, uh, the Time Stone, right? And uh, I think he's going by the name Overtime now. And we know that Star um, has the, uh, the Reality Stone. But those other stones are spread out into the universe, and now we're going to see what happened to those stones in the annuals this year. And um, I'm of the mindset that we're seeing really sort of uh, morally ambiguous characters take over these stones. So there's a good chance that um, that this may be, may, may be some sort of Mephisto-led um, Infinity Watch. Um, I could see there's a lot going on with Mephisto. His sort of, uh, his paws, claws, hands are in all areas of the Marvel Universe right now. So that's, that's going to be huge, obviously. Um, but the other books we're looking at for that, of course, are the Contest of Champions 1, um, the Leano uh, Francis Hugh uh, variant with White Fox on the cover. She was on the cover of the regular as well, and of course, you know um, you know that beautiful, beautiful variant, the Inhyuk Lee, uh, that people were chasing and will continue to chase. Uh, Ms. Marvel 13 is Amulet. This is one of the characters also involved in that. Uh, you're also going to see the character over in Spider-Man, um, the one who kidnapped him, um, his name, uh, Quantum. Uh, popped up in like Miles Morales, maybe eight, nine around there. Um, I don't have that book on hand because it's in my Spider-Man spec, which is a whole separate stack. Uh, and then also Guardians of the Galaxy, we see the first, this this guy up in the corner, this Prince of Power, and there's something weird going on with this Prince of Power. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, it makes sense that he has the Power Stone, right? I guess with that being his name, and there he is. Um, sort of like a California dude. He was just in that last uh, issue um, of Guardians of the Galaxy as well. They gave him a little more background, a little more depth, and um, and we got to see sort of uh, what what his sort of power set is, but I'm still not sure who he is yet. Uh, so, so that's a mystery to look at. But all those characters uh, will be inheriting or fighting for a main character in one of the, uh, of the annuals of who will get those stones. Um, We've seen a lot with the Sin Eater lately, and uh, they just had a one-shot, uh, I don't know if anyone read it, on Wednesday, and uh, obviously you want to chase the original um, the original books, the, the Peter Parker 107 through 110, um, the whole death of Gene DeWolf, but there's a beautiful first edition um, hardcover, and um, this is actually, uh, I, I've seen the paperback as well available for this, but this had sort of reprints the whole thing. Uh, a lot of times you can find these books at uh, at like sales of, of comic shops and sort of put in their back bins and they don't even know what a lot of these uh, trades are worth. I can't say I'm an expert on them, but uh, the more I sort of look at them, the more I, I think that's where, you know, that's where the future lay. Uh, final books, uh, I just want to talk about really quickly, um, talked a little bit about that vision quest and... I think also in terms of this wackiness we're seeing um, and maybe some of the West Coast Avengers run we're seeing in there, uh, we know that she has twins in the book and one of the major characters involved with those twins is this Master Pandemonium and this was issue four. I'm a big proponent of grabbing, um, like looking up things to come and of course grabbing some cheap slabs and if you can grab 30 and $40 slabs of first appearances of characters who may, you know, pick up some interest down the line. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, that's part of my nostalgia and childhood anyway. Um, and the other one I know uh, Nick just brought up on Key Collector the other day, uh, K-1000, 
Captain America 18. This is the first appearance of Primax. We see Primax as these uh, part of the defenders of the future, defenders of tomorrow, um, showing up in that history of the Marvel Universe uh, 6. They love to have these huge splash uh, spreads, Mark Waid, uh, Cates, Aaron, um, and then all these things that happen sometimes a year or two years in the future, just like uh, we saw with the free comic book day in the Avengers and Brood Thor. Uh, but anyway, this is the first appearance of that Primax who becomes the Captain America of the future. And this, uh, and this is sort of him being sort of tortured again and again, Captain America. But at the end, he, uh, we see Primax get the shield. Uh, again, cheap, 9.8 buy. If it comes down to me finding a book $5 that may be like near mintish and $30 for a potential, um, you know, something that could triple down the line maybe uh, or even go up higher that's something I'm grabbing but uh, that's what I do on the comic perspective a little bit of modern speculation tied in with uh, what's to come thanks for joining me uh, join us on the Spectres Club